Hi, Pastor Johnson here. I really appreciate your taking the time to look at this video. It's an important part of our Vision for Mission appeal that we're doing in 2013. It's not the first one and not likely to be the last one that we do, but we're asking you to join others in this great cause, uh, supporting it for the mission and ministry that we understand Christ has given us in this place. Uh, the cause, what we're really trying to do is to fulfill the mission Christ gave us in Matthew 28, to go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, to do that, uh, it involves doing ministry, a ministry of care for other people. The more people see Christ in us and in the actions of our church, the more the witness will be clear about God's love in Jesus Christ. We gather around word and sacrament as a congregation, that is, where the church is, and we work hard to make sure people are able to receive that word and sacrament on a regular basis. It's how we grow in faith, by hearing the word. We also understand that everything we have is a gift from God, not just ourselves individually, but also our congregation that what God has given us as a blessing of these facilities and the properties that we have, they need to be put to his use to glorify him. And we have tried to do that throughout the history of our church. Your donation will make all of these things possible, both to continue and support the ministries that are going on and also to support the development of dreams for the future. As you may know, we have developed a variety of strategic committees attempting to focus on various aspects of ministry. As we did that, we also recognized that much of our ministry is supported by our mortgage. You may know that our mortgage is just under $20,000 a month. Now, by any means, that's an extraordinary amount of money but it also represents an extraordinary amount of ministry. When you consider the numbers of things that are done every day, every week, the number of people who are touched with the gospel and Christ's care, that's quite a valuable asset that we have in all of these 30,000 feet of facilities and 43 acres of property. It's used continuously. As you may know, if you stop by the church, there are very few times when you would come here and have to unlock the door. Not only our membership using it, our groups, our committees, but also outside groups using our facilities to develop and to serve in their ministries. Each week, more than 350 worshipers gather at our two locations. We provide for them a place to worship and that's significant in terms of that mortgage and what it provides. These facilities allow us to gather for fellowship, to study the word, to organize our ministry by having meetings. We are extraordinarily blessed with all that God has given us. We also recognize that we're not the only ones doing ministry. And in reality, there are many outside groups that use our facilities in order to uh, accomplish their mission. We provide our facilities to any ministry group, nonprofit group, at no charge. We supply the uh, lights and the air conditioning. Uh, we do the cleaning in order to support them in their ministries. That makes a witness to the community at large as well to, uh, to our own members in understanding who we are as disciples of Christ. So here at Shepherd of the Woods, we've gone from an empty plot of land in 1980 to those 43 acres that shine like Christ, that provide care for people throughout this city. What I'd like to briefly do is to uh, take a look at these four strategic areas we've been focusing on and talk a little bit about their history and what our vision development idea is for the future. The first is our South Side property. I assume you know that it was first in 1985 when 33 families committed to building a multi-purpose building. 
What we use currently as our fellowship hall was used for worship, for community meetings, uh, for fellowship. It was the only 4,000 square feet on the property. In 1991, we added a nursery. We had one, but it was too small. The need demanded some further expansion of our facility. In 1993, we added what we called the Shepherd Center, an education building and also a fellowship hall. In 1995, we added uh, extra classrooms on the back patio and also, unbelievably, a place for some storage by building a garage. In 1997, the adults had no place to meet, and so four additional classrooms were added to the back of the Shepherd Center. In 1999, we added the gathering area and the offices so that we could be effective in doing our ministry and in supporting the ministries of the church. In 2001, we added the sanctuary, wrongly calling it the final sanctuary, but we really were blessed uh, with a tremendous, beautiful building that allows us to gather week after week. In 2008, we added what we called the Annex, a way to have additional space for our school, for the principal and an office, as well as a volunteer area, um, and now used also as a library for the school, and a meeting room, and offices. Many of our members uh, were not around when all of this was done. In fact, very few are here from the time of meeting in that first uh, Worship Center in 1985. Those members throughout the years gave in various ways in pledging toward building and construction. As you could hear, about every two years we have been doing construction to provide what we have today. As our strategic committee met, it looked to the future and said, what can we do even in further ways to use the facilities that we have? And we've considered a food bank, a clothing bank, opening up our fellowship hall as an adult daycare center, perhaps providing community meals on a regular basis for some of our neighbors who are financially challenged. We're looking at trying to find ways to improve our utility uh, expenses and to lower them. Uh, some of our construction, of course, was begun in 1985, and those facilities do not use the most economical um, machinery that's available, and it may make sense for us to retrofit some of those items. We also know that uh, some of our painting has not been done in more than 10 years, and we would expect to include in our vision for mission painting of the entire facility. The next area of strategic study was the Lakeshore property. As you may know, that was purchased in 2004, and immediately we put it into use for ministry and for worship. Our first worship took place lakeside, just in the open air. That doesn't work real well with inclement weather and on hot days, so our first purchase was a tent, and we worshiped there outside with a swamp cooler cooling us in the uh, summertime and being really cold in the wintertime. After a year, when the uh, seller moved off the property, we took his barn, converted it into a worship center, and put fellowship under a tent outside the back barn. In 2008, we built the 6,800 square foot Faith Center, once again a multi-purpose building that allows us to do worship and fellowship Sunday school, community meetings, and the school itself. In 2010, we added a double-wide modular. That allowed us to continue to expand the school and also use it for various meetings with uh, the youth who use it regularly on weekends and in the summertime for camps. The vision that uh, is foreseen with the Lakeshore property is fairly extensive. We look at really developing it for a retreat center, perhaps adding it someday into a retirement center. We're looking for additional place, modulars perhaps, uh, for additional school classrooms. 
Right now, in fact, we're looking at modulars that are single wide that would allow us to add one classroom, but at an affordable $9,000. In addition, there will be some expenses for installation, uh, but we are looking seriously at adding those and as quickly as we can. We may well also look for the addition of a staff person because the use of the facilities and the property is so extensive, we really believe that it would make sense to have one person focused on that area. Lastly, let me mention also an outdoor columbarium, an area for worship and reflection. We have had that on the drawing board for quite a while, and it looks as if that will be able to be added based on the results of the Vision for Mission appeal. Those two properties, if you come back, those two properties um, have been uh, in our hands and used and developed, and those are really the assets of the congregation, those properties and facilities. But we know our ministry is more than the things we own, it's what we do with those things. And so the next strategic area that really developed was the Peru mission. That Peru mission was begun uh, in uh, 2005. That was our first trip. And since then, we've made 13 trips to Peru with 235 missionaries, volunteers who paid out of their own pockets to go and serve there. In 2006, we went to Tarma. And we found that to be a beautiful place to develop ministry. There's not a Lutheran church within 150 miles. And we began to do ministry of care. That included the development of Lutheran social services of Tarma. We have staff people working for us there and began to provide care for the neediest of the needy there in Tarma. As that developed, people gathered around and like the people in Macedonia crying out for the gospel, asked for baptisms, asked for further explanation of the gospel. Since then, we have developed two sites for worship. And every Sunday, we have a, a pastor who comes from Lima, travels 150 miles, and provides care in worship and service uh, with the people both in Tarma and in an agricultural village nearby called Juan Cal. The Juan Cal setting has a chapel, but the Tarma, the main city of Tarma, we are now renting space. We converted a restaurant, turned it into a small chapel, and it's filled just about every Sunday. The problem is that's rented space, and currently it's for sale. It may well be that the next owner does not want to rent to us, but use it for their own purposes. So our vision development of the Tarma mission really relates to the purchase of some land. It's estimated it would be somewhere between 30 and 40,000. That will allow us to put a foothold in Tarma to uh, maintain the consistency of the ministry there and over the years, then in the future, develop the facilities that will serve not only for worship, not only for uh, craft development and care of community needs, but also in the dreams, a day school that could uh, develop there in Tarma. The last of the strategic areas is our school. It may be considered the last on the list, but it's first in many of our hearts. The ministry itself began in 2006. The dreams were decades before that. There was always a feeling as if bringing the gospel on a regular basis to uh, children who are in formation would be a real gift this congregation could provide. So in 2006, with 12 children, the school began. Today, there are more than 100 children in the five grades and the preschool of our uh, day school. More than 600 children and their families have been touched by the blessing of that school. The gospel is proclaimed to all the nations as we find people coming from all over the world trying to provide 
um, uh, good education for their children, and also a moral and ethical standard by which to live. It is an extraordinary blessing, and you and your family are invited to stop by at either location as the school is doing its ministry. In terms of vision and development, the vision for Mission Appeal will allow us to develop some additional classrooms in the elementary area. We look at those modulars and really believe they're a good use of funds, a good stewardship of the funds that we receive, and will allow us to continue to develop upper grades. The school has been a tremendous ministry to us. So, you may be asking, how can we uh, continue to develop these ministries in our congregation? And that is by the appeal that is before you. You've received a, a packet of information. I hope that you have read through it. If you would, take a look at that. And uh, as you look at the pledge form, uh, which you should be able to find in that packet, I want to point out a number of things to you. Uh, number one, you'll notice for the first time, this is a two-year appeal instead of three years. Considering the challenges in our society and economy, we really felt it would be easier for people to know what they can do over the next two years rather than over the three. As you look at the uh, top of that document, it's got in bold letters, not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. There are a variety of income levels in our congregation, and we ask everyone to consider seriously how they can support this appeal. If you look at the number needed column on the form, you'll see it totals 324. Interestingly, that's the number of families we have in our congregation and partners who are with us even though they have not joined, commit to the ministry. We really hope and pray that every family will be able to contribute something. We hope that will be prayerfully and seriously considered. Now concerning the amount. If you look at that chart, you'll notice that there is on uh, uh, the very top one contribution that is needed at the rate of $1,282 per week. You may find that goes beyond your ability. It is beyond mine, to be quite honest. But as you come down that column, you'll finally come to a number that really is feasible. It might take some sacrifice on your part, and to a certain extent, I hope it will. If this is just leftovers, the extra that we have, it's really not the kind of sacrifice that Christ calls for. I appreciated a member in one of our previous appeals describing the fact that they had canceled their yard service, got their own exercise by cutting their own lawn, and every time they did, they thought about the money that was going to be used in such great causes in their supporting the vision for the mission appeal in the past. As you go further down, you'll see three options. That's the way that you can contribute. There is a line to give the total amount, the summary amount that you'll give over two years, and then the options of the ways to give it. Option number one includes an initial gift. There will be an envelope in your uh, packet of material, and that's allowing you to give a, uh, an amount to begin with. That really allows us to begin the ministry development right away. The ultimate amount is uh, offered over the two-year period, which means whatever's pledged will be received only on the last Sunday. But we really want to begin some development now, and we need to, so if you're able to give an initial donation and then a regular amount every week, every two weeks, every month, uh, that really is appreciated. Option two does not include an initial gift, but simply divides out the amounts, and that comes from the chart up above. And then option three, any other way that you wanted to give, or any other amount, perhaps, that is not listed in the chart above. Lastly, on the far right, you'll see ways that you can make your contributions with stocks and assets and property and insurance, matched giving, deferred giving, 
um, those options. If you need further information about them, uh, please do speak to us. The appeal Sunday itself is March 3rd. You can give in your uh, pledge any time prior to that, but we would hope that all families would respond in some way by March 3rd. The giving itself begins on April 1st because March 31st is the end of the previous three-year appeal. I do hope you will review the materials. I do hope you will agree with me that this is a tremendous and remarkable ministry taking extraordinary commitment on the part of the members. I hope we can count on your commitment and your serious pledging and donation so that the mission of Christ and the ministry in his name can continue to come from Shepherd of the Woods. Thank you for your time and your interest in this mission appeal. Thank you.